God bless you and welcome to the Victory Tabernacle Church of Raleigh virtual Bible study. We're certainly glad that you are joining us uh, in this broadcast. We're certainly thankful that you're allowing us to come into your homes, that we may um, study God's word together, that we may walk through God's word and find some handles of helps for living and dealing with life issues and life problems. Certainly we thank you for uh, tuning in and for uh, watching and certainly for your responses uh, to the broadcast and letting us know that we are being helpful. That's our main objective, amen, is to be helpful. Uh, and we all need help. Uh, we are all looking to grow and to uh, mature uh, in Christ and to become more like him. So we're thankful that it is through the word that God allows us to uh, reach our potentials, to reach our goals that he has set for us, and that is to become the express image of him through Jesus Christ by the help of the Holy Spirit as he uses his word. Again, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're certainly thankful for God has blessed us through another day. Uh, I guess you are tucked in at home with your families tonight, or you may be on the road riding, or wherever you may be at your job or whatever, we want you to know that God is good and God is great and God is a merciful God. And it is because of his love and his compassion that we are still alive. We are not consumed. Uh, we're not stressed out. Uh, we're not panicking. Uh, we are uh, not worried. Uh, we are just, know, we, we just know that God has everything under control. As I often remind you, continue to pray for our nation, our president, those that are in position of authority, uh, that God would give them wisdom and God would give them guidance and God would give them understanding. Most of all, that God would, uh, through uh, this uh, pandemic, draw them to him. Yes, that we would look to him. He's our only hope. He's our only source. Uh, God is calling men back to him. So again, let's pray. Continue to pray for our medical warriors, those that are, are standing in the gap and giving attention to those that are dealing with not just this pandemic, but any kind of sickness, any kind of illness. Uh, pray for those that are, have gone through surgery and recovery. Pray for those uh, that um, have lost their loved ones or, or dealing with loved ones that are at death door. Uh, it's a praying time as my wife oftentimes say, and certainly she is a praying woman. So again, we want you to know that we are praying for you here at Victory Tabernacle Church. Even though we're not meeting, we're still in prayer for you. And so we want you to know that somebody loves you today and somebody is thinking about you and somebody's concerned about you and somebody's praying for you. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to um, be glorified for you to be glorified in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirits we thank you for your holy presence we thank you for your holy spirit that lives inside of us that is bearing witness with our spirit that we are your children and father we've been in this study God and uh, we are learning to watch what we say. We are learning to speak wholesome words. We're learning not to speak things, Lord, that would stir up strife, God, and cause problems and issues, Father. And Lord, we're asking you to help us. That's a big area in our lives that you told James to write to us about. And Father, we're asking you to help us in that area, Father. Uh, we don't want corrupt communications to come out of our mouths. But we want you to use our mouths to edify and to build up and to strengthen and to make whole God and to bring people to a saving knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you tonight. And Father, we give you praise for this study. Bless us now as we go into your word. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, again, um, we are waging war on worry. And I think we're kind of winding up uh, our study here 
on uh, watching what we say. Uh, we're certainly learning that um, there should be a discipline uh, in our lives when it comes to our tongues. And that's what this is, study has been about. It has been about learning how to discipline ourselves. So again, we're gonna try to wrap this study up. We've talked about uh, three of the functions um, and I ended last week, and I want to give you some handles of helps because one thing to tell you about what is going on in your life is another thing to not uh, tell you how that you can possibly uh, deal with it or meet it head on and, and, and get victory over it. So we want to do that uh, tonight. We talked about the function as a, um, uh, a gauge, a, a spiritual meter in our lives. We talked about the tongue functioning as a guide uh, to control our tongues uh, that we could uh, better glorify God and edify people. And well, last week we talked about the function as a gird, uh, one that uh, help keeps us in check, uh, one that uh, we keep reins on our tongue, one that we understand that our body is going to follow what we say. Our body is going to uh, mimic what we say. So that is very important. And, and, and we talked about the fact that Jesus says that uh, things are impossible with man, but they are possible with him. Because when it comes to controlling the tongue, James says, you can't do it. Nobody can tame the tongue. And if you speak and don't offend, then you are a perfect man and none of us are perfect. So our main objective then is that if we can't be perfect, we're going to strive for perfection, and we're going to do that by learning how to control our tongue. So let's go to James. And we've been reading down basic through nine, but we're going to read now the 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 uh, the rest of of the story and see how that plays out in our teaching. James uh, chapter three, verse nine. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, therewith we curse man, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Though the fountain send forth the same place, sweet water and bitter, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and do with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if any ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but if earthly, sensual, devilish. For we, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to entreat, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruits of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Wow, I tell you, when we read this again, James is kind of hitting it on the head as he deal with um, this tongue. Uh, watching what we say. And again, uh, we talked about some things wherein that James was kind of blunt last week. And, and even as you go through uh, this text, we see that it's sticking out even more as we read tonight when he talks about, you know, the fact that uh, the wisdom that descended not from above is earthly, sensual, devilish. He still is identifying the areas um, that are so close to what we say to help us understand how important it is to watch what we say. Notice even now he's he uses some terminology here that really drives the nail home and helps us to kind of understand it is important that we watch what we say. So again, I tell you, I want to give you some handles of helps. Um, because we can't tame the tongue, but you know, that's impossible with man, but possible with God. But the Holy Spirit can give us increasing power to monitor and to control what we say. 
Now, how is he going to do that? Number one, one method we can use is asking ourselves a question before we speak. Will this honor God, glorify his name, make his kingdom more attractive? What I'm getting ready to say, does it honor God? Does it glorify his name? Does it make his kingdom more attractive? We don't want to turn people away from Christ by our dispositions, by what we say. And, and even when we're saying what needs to be said, even when we're saying what ought to be say, said, even when we're saying what people need to hear, we have to learn to uh, let our speech be seasoned with grace. And we have to ask God to help us to be tactful in how we communicate truth. Because we know uh, through the study of the Bible, uh, even Jesus, who was the greatest communicator, uh, even at that, some was offended by what he said and how he said it. So we're not going to please everybody, but we're going to endeavor uh, to show forth good works by uh, doing the best we can and being tactful in how we communicate Christ to the world. Secondly, another method is to ask uh, the Holy Spirit to direct our thoughts and actions each day. Uh, because as somebody says that they rather see a sermon than hear one, I don't know about that, but I want you to know that it's important that we understand that our actions uh, speak louder than words. Amen. Because seeing a sermon uh, uh, is helpful, but it won't save you. Uh, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But, you know, we won't split hairs over that. But that but we must learn that we must ask the Holy Spirit uh, to direct our thoughts and our actions each day. And because remember, we said it originate with our thoughts and from our thoughts to our actions, our actions display our character, our action display the integrity that is in us. And we'll see that as we go through this study tonight. Then, then, then third of all, another method is making sure that it is the spirit of God rather than our spirit. And, and, and uh, that, that in order to do that, we must incorporate scripture uh, in our thoughts, in our lives. Again, how do we help uh, uh, control, or how do the Spirit help us control what we say? We, we must make sure that what we're saying is not what we want to say, rather than what God wants us to say. It's not what's in our spirit, uh, and it's not coming from the Holy Spirit. So one of the ways that we can do that is that we can uh, incorporate scripture, you know, learn to talk from the word. And I'm not trying to uh, imply that we ought to be uh, a storehouse of knowledge or impress people by how much Bible scripture we know or, or to be able to ravel on uh, uh, scripture because that means nothing if our lives are, are not, uh, doesn't back it up. But when we talk, learn to talk from God's word, learn to incorporate God's words into what we say. That's what makes what we say powerful. Yes, because God watches over his word. God anoints his word. God uses his word, not our words. He said, my words will not return to me void. My word will accomplish what I send it after. My word will prosper in the places that I send it to. So just remember that. That's why all times we get bash, uh, backlash. Oftentimes we get pushback because we're using our words rather than God's word. We're using, we're talking from our spirit rather than allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through us. So, so that, that's, that's, that's a good method there. Let's, uh, James, since we're there, and I'm talking about that, go to James 1. James 1. And let's go down to verse 26. Listen what he says. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridle not his tongue, but deceive his own heart, 
This man religion is vain. Wow. I mean, James, <laughs> you know, this, this, this man here is really helping us. You know, he says that, you know, if, if you seem to be r religious, if you call yourself uh, saved or a Christian or whatever vernacular you want to use, a believer or born again, it, the bottom line is if you are naming the name of Christ, if you are saying that you are a new creation and that God's spirit is now living in you and is bearing witness with you that you are one of God's children, then our main objective is to be like him, is to be like Christ, is to mimic him, is to mimic Christ, is, is, is that the Holy Spirit will be seen working through us. And he says here that if you say that and you don't watch what you say, you don't control what you say, you, you don't guard what you say. He says that your religion is vain. Wow. I mean, that, that, that makes me, you know, do some soul searching. That makes me say to myself, you know, uh, okay, let, let's, let's really put uh, myself through the acid test. Uh, am I really a born again believer? Does Christ really live in me? Is that manifested through what I say? Wow, that is something. That's what James says. He said, if you can't bridle your tongue, if you can't control your tongue, if you uh, don't know how to keep yourself from uh, becoming furious and angry and saying hurtful and mean and destructive things, Wow, he, he says, your, your religion is not much. It doesn't count for much. That's what James is really saying here. He said, he uses the word religion in this text, uh, and, and he uses it in a sense that it has everything to do with our worship in the outward sense. Yes, the, the, the outward, you know, worship, you know, because we, we're big on what we're worshiping or how we're worshiping God inwardly. He's in our hearts. He's in our minds. He's in our spirit. But James says that what you say res, uh, reflects uh, your uh, religion also or your worship also. And, and, and he says it does it in an outward sense. James is saying a controlled tongue, amen, poses a uncontrolled tongue, excuse me, uh, poses a problem. You know, it, 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 it reveals an unseen issue in our lives. And that's where uh, this Bible study comes in. God is just trying to help us, you know, because he, he don't want our tongue to be uncontrolled. And James says this poses a spiritual problem. And someone that can't control their tongue has a spiritual problem. And, you know, we, 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 we are big on the cardinal sins, but James says that this is a problem, too. Remember our last week's study and with this, he says, you know, uh, it is set on fire by hell. You know, it set the course of life uh, on fire as hell. He, he says here, you know, that we've talked about, you know, today that, I mean, you know, it's devilish, it's sensual. You know, that, that, that's something to think about. So James is saying that, 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 that what we say uh, creates or reveals an unseen issue in our lives. It yields no real fruit. It yields no uh, results that honor God. The way others will know whether we are, uh, are genuine believers or not will be or have much to do with what we say. Uh, to talk about Christ uh, in one sense and to use our mouths, as they say, to discredit one another in another sense uh, puts our religion or our worship in jeopardy. It is, uh, it is what we choose to talk about. 
It is what we choose to say. It is what we choose to speak about. The conversation that we carry on, amen, helps the world to see that something is different about us. Our conversation is meaningless unless it leads, amen, uh, others uh, to a closer walk with Christ or leads others to want to get to know this Christ or at least others to know that he can help them as he helped us. So that is very important tonight. And remember the last thing I want you to know too is not only your conversation, but your conversion is meaningless unless it leads to change in our lives and a growing faith. So that's, that's, that, 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 those are some handles of help that we didn't get to last week that we're getting to this week to help you uh, uh, understand that the Holy Spirit can help you control what you say. You, you might not be able to f perfect uh, uh, your communication, uh, but you can certainly strive uh, to uh, do a better job of that. So last but not least, uh, the function, uh, the fourth function, as we end this study, uh, the Holy Spirit use, uh, can use our tongue as a guard. The tongue reveals what sort of wisdom we possess. Notice here that James has told us in our study, amen, that that, that wisdom from above is, is sensual, is, is, is earthly, is, is carnal, is devilish. So we must understand tonight that the tongue reveals what sort of wisdom we possess. A good tongue, uh, good speech, good conversation protects our integrity and enhances our character. I tell you, it's nothing like uh, hearing people uh, speak and hearing Christ do what they say. It's nothing like hearing people speak and know that it's the Holy Spirit that is uh, helping them communicate their message. It's nothing like, like being around people, amen, whose uh, speech encourages growth, whose speech motivates you to grow, whose speech motivates you to change. Wow, that, that, you know, that's why we gotta watch what we say Speech is important, you know, speech, amen, uh, uh, I tell you, it, it, it is that that we don't realize that can change the lives of people, can change the very atmospheres that we are in, can uh, change something from being destructive, amen, to being something that can be advantageous. We, we, we must realize that it is very important to understand that. So we ought to ask ourselves the question, is our tongue uh, a good guard for our lives or a bad guard? You know, is our tongue really protecting our integrity and enhancing our character or is it causing people to see us in a bad light? Uh, does it create peace? or reveals that we are not what we say. Kind of put it like James would say, does it reveal hypocrisy? Yes, uh, say one thing and doing another. Uh, uh, but, but we must understand that this is very important. So let's close tonight uh, this study uh, with some handles of, of help uh, here. And, and let's see, can we uh, walk away. Let's get Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Listen what he says here uh, that is very important. Um, let's go down to verse 11. Come ye children, Hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Remember, we just talked about a few minutes ago about wisdom. You know, James said, if you like, ask God, you know. And, and the fear of the Lord 
is the beginning of wisdom. You know, if you fear the Lord, we will take this study and apply it to our lives. If we fear the Lord, uh, we will become wise communicators uh, because we're taking in this study and watching what we say. He said, come you children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Now watch what he says. He said, I'm going to teach you the fear of the Lord. Then he starts the assignment. He starts the lesson. He starts teaching. Listen what he says in verse 12. What man is it is he that desires life and loveth many days that he may see good. Who is it that want to live a good life? Who is it that, that wants to have long life and have it in a way that uh, is conducive to what we call a joyous life? You know, uh, uh, a, a life that can be effective, a life that can be productive. This is what he says. He says, in, 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 in many days, you know, you, you, you just don't want to live long, but you want in that long life for it to be good. He says, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. <laughs> wow, that is powerful right there. If you want to live a long life, if you want to have uh, good days, if you want uh, God to bless you in all that you do. He says, watch what you say. Guard your tongue. Keep it from evil. And keep thy lips from speaking guile. From speaking uh, words that doesn't edify. For speaking words that doesn't uh, build up. For speaking words that doesn't comfort. Or words that doesn't strengthen. Or words that doesn't help people to see the error of their ways and change. He said, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and uh, pursue it. Now, that, that, that is powerful. That is powerful. Now, when you think about that, let's go to 1 Peter 3. That's the Old Testament rendition of, of watching what we see. 1 Peter 3 Let's go down to verse 10. Well, matter of fact, uh, let's go up a little bit further. Uh, verse 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not renting evil for evil or railing for railing, but contra uh, contrawise, blessings, knowing that ye are there unto called that ye should inherit a blessing. And now listen what he says, not renting evil uh, for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessings. You know, don't say to people what they are saying to you. Don't treat people through words the way that they are treating you. Don't try to demean and destroy people's character and integrity the way that they are trying to destroy you. Uh, you know the best way to answer a fool is this. That's the best way. Don't say anything. When somebody starts talking foolish and crazy and get, the best thing is to just be quiet. That's the best answer that you can give because if you try to uh, uh, in turn go what they call tit for tat, then you bring yourself down to their level or they bring you down to their level and you don't want that to happen. He says, for he that will love life and see good days, remember, remember what David said? But listen what Peter says, for he that will love life and see good days, let him reframe his tongue from evil and his lip that they speak no guile. Wow. Come on, saints. This is good stuff right here. This is powerful stuff right here. Let's go to Psalms 141. And I hope that uh, uh, we are keeping up with these notes and stuff that's going to help us in our days to come uh, uh, with 
controlling our tongue. Psalms 141. Listen what he says here. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. I got 142 there. Psalms 141. Now, this is a prayer that David prays. The, the, the one of the functions of the tongue is to be a guard over our lives, to, to help direct our lives in the right path, to help our lives to be fruitful, and to help us to live long life, to help us to have good life, to help us, as they say in the vernacular now, to have the quality of life that one would enjoy and one would love. Listen, listen, David prays this prayer. Listen, this is a prayer now that David is praying. This is not just a lesson that we are studying here uh, to just uh, gain knowledge of the tongue and the importance of it and uh, the, the, the negatives and the positives of it. But no, it, this study is that it becomes life changing. This study is for the fact that we can become more like Christ. Uh, as, as we read a few minutes ago, that compassion will be in our voice, even when it's rebuke, even when it's chastisement, even when it's correction, that we'll be able to do it with compassion, that we will be pitiful towards one another. In other words, that always remember that when you're dealing with people, Treat them the way that you would want to be treated. Respond to them in a way that you would like for someone to respond to you. Talk to them in a way that you would want someone to talk to you. David prays this prayer. He doesn't just do a scripture reading. But now he, he, he realized that this is important. He realizes that this is going to be meaningful in his life if he's going to glorify God, if he's going to be fruitful for God, if God is going to use him uh, to advance his kingdom or enhance his kingdom or grow his kingdom or Make his, make his kingdom attractive. Make people want to come to Christ. Make people want to come to church. Make people want to change. Make people see that this is a wonderful life, that this is a great life, that this is a blessed life. Matter of fact, uh, bring them to the point that they understand that this is the only life, yes a life in Christ, a life in God, a life that is uh, um, uh, uh, led by the Spirit, a life that is cultivated by the Holy Spirit, a life that the Holy Spirit is in control of. That's where I'm trying to get. This, this is a good life. Listen at the prayer he prays as we wind up. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto you. Let my prayers be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Now, here is, here, I want to, I want this to become a reality to you tonight. Notice the prayer that he's praying. He's not praying here about his enemies. He's not praying here about protection. He's not praying here about healing. He's not praying here about deliverance. He's not praying here that God would prosper him. He's not praying here that God would help him through a low period in his life. But this prayer that he's praying here is all about helping him in his communication, helping him in watching what he says 
This is powerful. If I don't say nothing else tonight, I mean, I, you know, I, and I want to tell you something. I want to be honest with you. You know, I, I was reading this and I stopped as soon as I read it and it became evident to me that this is what King David prayed and I began to pray for myself. Now, I began to pray and say, Lord, you know, now all that other stuff that I normally pray for, I'm not praying for, but now I'm praying for my personal self. I'm praying that you would help me. All this that I've been saying in my study, all this that I've been teaching the people, all this that I've been revealing uh, in your word about watching what we say, about controlling our tongue. Now, Lord, allow me uh, to uh, uh, take my own medicine. Now allow me to be a student of my own teaching. Yes, that, that after I read this and I saw David pray this, I started praying for myself, Lord, help me. Help me, you know, help me. I tell you right now, it blessed my soul. Now watch what he prays for. He prays that God would set a watch, that God would set a guard before my mouth. Wow. You know, and I, I was coming in, uh, to the church, and, and, I, I, and, 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 you know, the word picture jumped out at me. I came downtown, and I came by the Capitol, and they got these metal uh, connecting fences all the way around uh, the Capitol and the monuments. And there are guys everywhere standing like this. They're standing on guard. They're watching. They're protecting. They're making sure that nothing happens to or, or happen on those grounds that shouldn't happen. They're guarding it. They're protecting it. And I thought about the study that David said, you know, you know, he, he, he's trying to set a guard, you know, over his lip. He's trying to keep uh, uh, things, on, I mean, from from being said that shouldn't be said or things are uh, getting into his spirit that shouldn't get into his spirit or thoughts getting into his mind. Because remember, we said that, you know, it start with thoughts. You know, we, we just don't talk. We think about what we say. Because, you know, we, we said, we say, you know, um, um, I, you know I, I didn't even think about that. I, I didn't mean to say that. But we always think before we talk. That's why that we can't use that as an excuse. You know, we've always given much thought to what we say, you know. And, and that's how quick the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is quicker than lightning, fa fly, uh, lightning fast. That when we think that he can communicate to us, well, don't say that. That is very important, you know. But, but, but David says here, like it was around that capital grounds, set a guard, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men that work of iniquity. Let, not, let, let me not eat of their dainties. And like I told you, a lot of times, you know, we can be good at what we do, but it's the company that we keep that, you know, creates a problem, you know. Uh, uh, and that's what David was saying, that, you know, don't, 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 don't run with gossipers. Don't run with people that uh, uh, always have the latest, you know. And, they, you know, they, it's like if they don't know it, they'll get back with you. I'll get back with you in a few days. I'll find out. And I've been guilty of that. And, but that's why I'm asking God to help me. And that's why you should be asking God to help you. Yes, this, this is really what he's saying here in this text. He's asking the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit to take control of what he says. Uh, uh, how, how does he do that? You know, he does it by us listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit telling us, it's just shut up. Yes, that's, 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 that's how the Holy Spirit helps us to control what we say. Uh, 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 the Holy Spirit, you know, when it, you're dealing with little children and, and they, you know, can get loud and, and they say inside voice, inside voice. Yes, but I want you to know that Holy Spirit is telling us that uh, we ought to be uh, quiet in our spirit, not only inside but outside too. 
You know, we should have an a inside voice even when we're on the outside. Yes, we, 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 we shouldn't be, as uh, we just read a few minutes ago, railing, you know, and, and ranting and raging. Uh, so we ought to understand that. But, but as we close tonight, uh, this is important. Let's go to Psalms 39. I want to kind of sneak this in. Uh, Psalms 39. Verse 1 says, I said I will take this same David. Man, this, this guy's on it. I said I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. Now, David knew as well as anybody, if you know anything about David's life, you know, he, he, he had some issues there, and he had some great sins, and he had some sins that was of his body. But now he gets even deeper. He says, I said I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle. Wow. He, you know, James, James says that we can't bridle our tongue. Our religion is vain. David said, I will keep my mouth with a bridle. You know what you do with a bridle horse? You know, you govern him, you know, which way to go. And you know, really, a bridle, a horse don't realize it, but he's been acclimated to respond to that bridle. But a bridle really means nothing to a horse if he really want to run away. But, but the bridle is basically a method used to keep him from running away. And that's, that's what he's saying about our tongue, that when we bridle our tongue, it keeps our, you know, from, up, from running off at the mouth. That's a good way to put it. You know, it, it helps us there. He says, with bridle, while the wicked is before me, I was done with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrows were stirred. My heart was uh, hot within me while I was musing the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. That's where I'm trying to get to. God is helping us. We're frail beings. We're imperfect beings. We're beings that on our own, we can be very destructive, but God wants to help us. And remember, the last thing I want to tell you today as I close out this study and I hope that uh, this will be something that you will be simple, that you can uh, take with you or take away from this study. I want to pray a simple prayer tonight. Yeah, I, I do this with my church. My church will tell you sometimes I have uh, one word prayers or two or three word prayers yeah, or, or, or sentence prayer because I understand the, 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 the uh, uh, the importance of it ain't about what you say, but the depth of what you say. You know, sometimes, you know, we could say two or three paragraphs of, 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 of prayer to God when only one word would be sufficient. And sometimes that word is help. Sometimes that word is mercy, Lord. You know, you, 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 so, so this is our prayer tonight. And it's a prayer that I've been praying from this study. And it's a prayer I want you to pray, a simple prayer. Here it is. Lord, you are Lord of my life. Now I want you to be Lord of my lips. Wow, isn't that a powerful prayer? That's what David prayed. Not only do I want you Lord of my life, but I want you Lord of my lips. And there may be somebody tonight that's listening to this broadcast, and I hope that the Holy Spirit has arrested you. And the only way that he can be Lord of your life and Lord of your lips is he has to be your life. He has to be in you. And God sent his son, Jesus. He died on Calvary for all of destructiveness that we have done with our lips and all the destructive words that we have said. Do you know that he can forgive you for that? And he can give you new life? 
The Bible said, whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he said, if you're saved, if any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creature. Old things, what we used to say, what we used to do, pass away. God allows new things to come in our lives that glorify him to help him. If you believe that he died and that God raised him from the dead to give you this new life by faith, ask him to come into your heart. By faith, receive him into your heart. By faith, make him Lord of your life and he will become Lord of your lips. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight, trust me, God has changed your life. Not about how you feel. It's not about how things look. It's not about how things will turn out tomorrow. It's by faith that you know now you've been changed. You're a new person. Get in the Word of God. Get with someone that helped you walk through the Word of God. Uh, find you a good Bible-believing church um, that minister God's Word that will help you to grow in His grace and in your faith. God bless you. We'll look to see you uh, on um, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And uh, we want to deal on Sunday about some storms in our lives. And we want you to know that we believe that you're going to be blessed, that the Lord should tarry and I should live. And if I don't, somebody else will be talking to you. God bless you and have a good evening.